All right, so we got the uh, Tahoe back to my buddy's house, and now we gotta go drop this trailer off and swap it out with the uh, my homemade camper because I'm leaving in the morning for an elk hunting trip out in Gunnison area of Colorado, and we've gotta get it home, get it loaded up. So that's what's next, but uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate all of the views and all of the subscribers. And I hope you all have a, a nice week. Well, it is 6.24 in the morning, and uh, it's a Saturday. We are heading to the mountains of Colorado, Gunnison, and we're going to go take pictures of some elk. So, we got the camper loaded up, we got way too much stuff, and uh, we're gonna try and get out there today and get into the night hunt. We'll be out there five to eight, but it's just uh, me and my buddy, and we're just about to pull up and grab him now. So, try and get some good footage. We're gonna go pretty deep into the forest. And this camper is, uh, it's a homemade custom camper that I built three years ago, four years ago. But I set it up for trips like this. I've just not been able to use it for a trip like this. So we're gonna go uh, see what we can get, in, get into with this and see if it all works out or not. One funny thing about this trip is this was supposed to be a roughing it trip, a uh, hike into the back country, stacking dudes in a tent, trying to keep warm, MREs, military rations, and uh, probably just being cold for an entire week, which, you know, some people enjoy that, but I've had to do enough of that for my job, as has my buddy, so, uh, when the when our third buddy fell off of the list and he I think he was interested in the roughing it part, he uh, we decided with a little persuasion from me just to take the camper out there. So I think we're going to be a lot more comfortable. We brought uh, let's see for two guys who are supposed to be kind of roughing it, 25 gallons of water and uh, let's see. Then I always have my extra gasoline, but I doubled that, so now I have 10 spare gallons of gasoline. And to be honest, I bring that more for other people than I do myself, because I always make sure that I have plenty of fuel before I get into the middle of nowhere. And uh, I figure worst case scenario, worst blizzard probably ever, this truck would idle for a very long time, which would be your 
very last ditch effort to, to stay alive and to not freeze. of uh, tuna when you can make the tuna the tuna salad for sandwiches. afternoon we got a couple of good spots right down on the little creek here a lot of good sign and now we're just waiting for uh, elk to come by so we can take a picture of it had a little snack I was getting hungry as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by my GoPro freezing it's starting to snow out here a little bit it's very beautiful most of this was already on the ground. We just have a little bit of flurries now. But man, if this isn't a good trip already. All right, well, dinner was delicious beef stew mountain house meal. And now it's time to do some dishes. Oh, yeah, we got some snow too, so. At least the camper's warm.
So we got 10 inches of snow last night. It's pretty crazy. It's like 10, 12 inches of snow. Getting the truck cleared off. I had my snow boots in the truck. Just where you want your snow boots when it's snowing is not in the camper. But uh, I'm not sure if we're hunting this morning or not. I really just need to get some reliable heat going at this point. Had we known 10 inches of snow was coming, we probably would have gone down the mountain last night. But whatever, we got a couple days of heat and food, so we'll be alright. Alright, so here's what happened. We came out here for a six day hunting trip. The weather report was two bands of snow, each about two to three, three inches at most. So I got up here on day one, woke up this morning to about 12, between 10 and 12 inches of snow on the ground. And those aren't in the snow drifts, that's, that's right in here. <clears throat> So we got another group of the way here and uh, we just walked up and talked to them and they're, we're all gonna try and pack out here today because with 10 to 12 on the ground already and the other band coming in tomorrow, it's well below freezing and the, the sun is behind the clouds. So this isn't gonna burn off today. The situation is not gonna get any better. So we're gonna pack out of here. We're gonna try and bring the trailer, but if it gets to the point of making it or not with the trailer, we'll just come back for the trailer some other time. Just get it off the trail and leave it. So because of that, <clears throat> we're packing all the important stuff, sleeping bags here, uh, reasons like this why I bring extra gasoline. And uh, so all the necessities, food-wise, water, are gonna go in the cab of the truck. In the event we have to ditch the trailer and then we end up getting stranded farther down the trail. You know, maybe we'll survive a couple of days longer than we would otherwise. So, who knows? Maybe by the end of this, uh, we've got uh, five or six dudes living in the camper with us. So, all right, let's get packed up. So pretty good. Yeah, that'll make those guys happy. So I'd have to. Only we could have had a V8 Raptor. They don't make V8 Raptors? No. They put the six in there. Somebody tried to walk out. 
I walk in. I thought the sketchy stuff was over. It is over. It's pretty sketchy right here. No, oh, nah, I don't worry about this. We have a chance of surviving that fall. <laughs> This might be sketchy. Alrighty. There's my resale. It's not as deep down here. Just waiting for a snow drift. There's hunters up there. All right, plan B. All right, so we made it down into the valley. Kind of non-eventful. A lot of snow, a lot of sketchy situations, but we got through it. Um, we're going to keep half an eye out for those other guys that were behind us. They uh, said they'd be ready in an hour, so we packed up, and we were ready in about 45 minutes, and they still hadn't even touched their camp, so... I'm not waiting around for them, but we'll keep an eye out. But now we're just looking for a new one, so. What's up? That one popped down. So we got a little carnage. <clears throat> that guy came down. It uh, almost got ripped off. Kind of wish it would have got ripped off. Jack is toast. And despite our best efforts yeah. of securing everything. We still have <clears throat> quite the mess. town swung by the old tractor store and we got a new jack put on here we had to go with quarter inch bolts because the uh, threads are stripped so this is somewhat temporary but good enough to finish the hunting trip now it's time for cheeseburgers Camp number two set up, looking good. Got our comfortable little propane firing, couple chairs. Campers all leveled out. Got our good and blocked up so we don't find ourselves on our roof. Down here. old mess in place look at that view though I don't think you can find a better camp spot it wasn't that easy getting to it because it's downhill we tried to back it down first and kept wanting to slide down this way backing it in so we just 
climbed out, turned around, just drove it back in through here, and then backed it into position. So it's looking good now. Even with a little more snow, we'll be able to get out of here just fine. today we got a nice lane down this way and then we got a nice lane out this way so pretty good and today we're comfortable because we brought a chair a little stool instead of sitting on the backpack
that's kind of stuff I live for, and I have a lot of fun, so, anyway, we, uh, went back up the trail a little bit, and there were more tire tracks coming down off the mountain, so, uh, it seems like those other guys made it out fine. Alright, let me get back to, uh, watching for wildlife. Oh, shoot, while I have you here. Another thing that I love about being out here is there is no cell reception. I haven't had cell reception. I, we got it when we went back into town, and of course, my phone blew up with messages. But from the time we pretty much left Gunnison yesterday, I lost cell reception, and I didn't get it back until about 11.30 today. So there were no vibrations in my pocket, no rings across the, the camper or in the truck or anything like that. And I think that's one thing technology has kind of screwed us on, is always being available. I was born in an age without cell phones. The first cell phone that I ever personally had was at the age of, like, 17. I got it for myself. Uh, but cell phones only really became a thing. Other than not those big bricks that people had, or the car phones. Those were around back in, like, the early 90s, late 80s, I think. But, like, actual, like, like mobile, mobile telephones like that the general person could have. I don't think those came around until I was like 16 years old. And uh, sometimes, man, I just gotta put those dang things down or turn them off and walk away from them. I try and do it on the weekends in like an hour or two here, an hour or two there, spend some time with the kid, but it's really, really hard. Yeah, just because we've been so used to everybody being available all the time to answer questions or to solve problems for you. So coming out here like this, if something, unless something else happens, I won't have cell reception for probably the next three or four days. So it's relaxing. Those vibrations in my pocket cause me anxiety sometimes. So it's nice to have some silence and some peace. And, uh, and I, I love camping, so. All right, now I'm going to get back to watching for animals. But I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, well, that's pretty much wrap for today. The sun's getting low in the sky. You can barely see it because the new, uh, the next band of snow is moving in. You can see it kind of out there. The clouds kind of passed on by and went away. And then now you can't, you can't really even see the other ridge lines, which they're really not even that far away. So the snow's moving in. And uh, hunting hours are coming to a close shortly anyway for today and I've got a bit of a hike back to my buddy and then once I meet up with him he and I have a pretty good hike to get out of here and uh, I really only want to do that in the dark if I have meat on my back so today is a close and I'll see you tomorrow maybe all right take care It's got a little spice. I think it's that first, the first one, as you're looking at it on the right. So, what we have here is a spice roulette. Don't know what that is, but it looks like salt and something else. Black pepper, which is clearly not black pepper. Garlic powder, which is also clearly not gar garlic powder. I think the cayenne has leaked into whatever this is. And then uh, the garlic powder is now pepper. And that might still be a little bit of paprika. But it's, uh, yeah, spice roulette.
was a while we were out there. Probably got another couple inches of snow. So it might be fun getting out of our little parking area, but we'll see. Temperature has dropped a lot too. It was about, I don't know, I think 20 when we came out here. But it is way colder. It'd be nice to go get warm in the camper and eat some lunch. Call me fancy. But remote start from down the trail. Oh, it'll be warmer that much faster. Oxygen up here is very thin. Alright, let's go eat some lunch. Yeah. You alright? Yeah. Well, we did it now. The trail didn't look too bad, and then it got narrow, so we committed. And now we're here with no traction because it's all ice under this. So, really we're just trying to straighten it back up and back out, but I don't see that happening at this point because we've slid downhill. So we're probably gonna try and put the butt in there, get the front end to swing around either by turning the wheels on four wheel drive or winch. See if we can aim this thing back downhill. But like I said, this is all ice. I just slid halfway down the hill, so let's see what we can get accomplished. Stop. Tree. Where's it at? On your tailpipe. Three. Shut up, truck. Is it just my bumper? No, it's your uh, ball hitch. Oh, it's not my tailgate. Now it's your tailgate.
Day four, it's five degrees outside and still snowing a little bit. Not too much, but. This over here shows you how much snow we got. Yep, there's the ground. It is really hard to breathe in five degrees. Whew. So pretty much just following our trail out from yesterday in. We were set up just up here. But we're gonna keep pushing on to another clearing a little bit deeper. So about being out of breath. Oh, just can't get enough oxygen. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you there. All right, so breaking some new trail here. All right, this is me for a while. Cover that whole area there. I kind of wish I was a little bit higher so I could see over this little temperature just out here it was five when we started today on day four in the morning we're kind of walking out about i think it's probably about 9 a.m but it feels like it's still five degrees it is so cold cannot wait to get back to the warmth and thaw out a little bit we're almost there i just gotta go up this trail and the truck should be about a couple hundred feet up that way still. I just heated up some water. Let's see. Oh, some of it's still hot. Let's try that again. All right, so now I want to try it with cold water. Actually, I'll admit, I just tried it with cold water and it didn't work, so check this out. I'm just wet. Let me go do hot water one more time. And this is water I brought to a boil.
Well, no luck again. Day four, afternoon hunt. About to the time when I got to meet up with my buddy so we can get back to the truck before sundown. But uh, we went and scouted out some places for tomorrow. Out on top of the mountain. A lot of open area where we can glass. Maybe we'll get lucky. But uh, on our way back down, we found some a pair of tracks that weren't there before. So we went and parked downhill quite a bit, tried to find the tracks. I finally picked up on them and followed them for probably about a mile downhill, down toward the reservoir where we're camping. So, but those were fresh within probably inside of two hours because when we drove up to the top, to the bowl, they weren't there. We came back down, they were there. So pretty much just getting barked out by all the squirrels now doing their little alert calls so I'm gonna go find my buddy out here in the woods someplace and then uh, head back to the truck and go see about some dinner soon a lot of walking today a lot of post holing through snow oh man look at this 5 a.m. negative 8 degrees not quite sure what we're gonna do about that I think we're approaching the dangerous temperatures We'll see. Be a validation. All right, so woke up this morning, checked the temperature on the truck, and it was uh, negative eight. Went in the camper, had a good long conversation with my buddy, and decided that it was unsafe to try and hunt today. And then, you know, if we would have downed something, trying to you know work that and what ended actually ended up being negative 12 um, shortly after that when we decided hey let's start packing up we need to get out of here uh, I turned the truck on again and it was down to negative 12 uh, and it was pretty much negative 12 until we got just outside Gunnison and the temperature came up to uh, positives again but still below 10 degrees so yeah we decided to call it for safety and Neither of us had the right equipment or clothes to go out in negative 12 and be smart about it. Uh, the slightest hiccup, I mean, there's creeks everywhere that are frozen over and you could very easily, I mean, you're not going to drown in them, but if you get any any water on your clothes or bare skin in negative 12, I mean, it freezes instantly. Uh, like I was trying to do that, uh, you know, throw the boiling water into the air and get snow. It wasn't even boiling this morning. It was just a leftover pot of, of water that was not even warm. And I opened the door and threw it out. It just, like, vaporized. So, and that was just the temperature of the camper, which is probably sitting at, like, I don't know, 60 degrees. So, uh, yeah, we called it for safety today. I'm heading home. Uh, I need a shower. I haven't showered in, like, five days, which is uh, not the longest I've gone. We won't talk about that in close to a month, but anyway... Um, yeah, go see my kid. My, my daughter's dying to see me. Fortunately, because we've had to come out of the mountains for issues here and there uh, throughout the trip, I got signal, so I was only off the grid for about 19 hours at a time. But uh, I guess I still got to keep up with my family a little bit on this trip, which is nice. I enjoy that, but it means I also had to keep up with work. So, gonna go. Uh, Drop the trailer off where it lives, which is not at my house, and uh, unload it as much as I can fit into the truck, and then head to the house, get cleaned up, and start resetting after this this trip. So even this morning, we ran into a couple issues, and it's kind of the other reason that I wanted to get out of there because negative 12, just stupid things start to happen. I mean, your your fingers don't work right. Your brain stops working right when you get in those uh, those situations, and uh, I mean it goes from just like a normal activity to an emergency, like snap of a finger. If it's something that you're used to, you know people up in the Yukon and whatnot, probably not a, a big deal for them to be a negative 12, but they also have clothes and they're used to being a negative 12, which we did not have either. So uh, drop the trailer down on the uh, the ball this morning. The couple are on the ball, and apparently. They were both pretty frozen up and it didn't seat. So we went to, the tires and the chocks were frozen to the ground and we went to bust those loose. 
the trailer um, popped off the ball. The coupler popped off the ball, and fortunately we had the safety chains connected because had we not, it might have rolled down the hill and then into the uh, into the valley there. But safety chains caught it as they're supposed to do, and uh, we were able to chalk the wheels, uh, kind of rip the uh, wiring out of the uh, seven way. So we had to fix that, which again, wasn't fun without function of your fingers in uh, negative 12, but we got through it, got the trailer hooked up and got out of Dodge. So there's a little list of things that we're gonna have to do on this trailer to to get her back to, I, she wasn't 100%. Problem is I never really finished it on the inside. Uh, mostly just wiring, there's some wires just hanging out around with uh, painter's tape holding them to the wall, but you know what? It just kept us warm for five or six days out in the bush. So, someday I'll finish it. But uh, yeah, so that's a wrap on this trip. A lot of fun. I think we saw more animals leaving today than we saw the entire five days we were out there. We saw three mule deer, although and uh, a ram, two rams, one standing in the middle of the road. So come around a corner and there's a, a big boy just standing there staring at us in the middle of our lane. But overall, fun trip. Not very successful in the way of feeding ourselves, but successful nonetheless. Get out of town, get into the woods, get off the grid. Yep. All right, well, thanks for following along, and uh, hope you all have a, a safe and a good week. Take care.